Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects. This one is part 10. A look at the progress made on a Stuart twin launch engine. It runs well and the scale of the parts is much improved. Andrew sourced the base from an unusual location. The image you've been looking at is from two or three weeks back. Now it looks like this, entirely different, and the base is, uh, well, also entirely different. I asked Andrew how he'd made it, he said I didn't, and he went on to explain that he'd got it from the local tip, and it's the base of a barometer. This is especially good because where the barometer fitted was an aluminium dish, and that's a really good sump to catch the oil and water from the engine. I'll stop talking for a while and let you listen to the engine running. I'll be back shortly, and after which I'll be speaking with Andrew. As you can see, the engine runs very well, better in one direction than the other, but that's just a timing issue. Over now to the live workshop audio. So what is wrong with these? The holes are a gnat stick too far that way. So Andrew made them again. This is the expansion link fitted to the engine, and as you can see, the eccentric rods are slightly further away from the valve fork than they would have been had he have fitted the ones I've just shown. I noticed that this engine looks considerably better appearance-wise than the number seven. How much more time did you take to make this look better? Twice as much. Is that because it's got two cylinders? No, I spent hours and hours and hours making the parts look individually like a model in its own right. Like I say in my videos, every part of the model should be a model in its own right. And also when you're making these things, sometimes you have to force yourself to go in the workshop and make the part. But it's a fine line between thinking, I don't want to be here and rushing it and spoiling it, to I don't want to be here but I'll make a good job of it. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, sure. How do you come across that? Um, I just walk away. If that can I get to that point where I'm going to be rushing it when I come back the next day? Bit of a side question, Keith. Um, as a musician, um, what sort of music do you like to listen to yourself? Classical music, really, I think, if I'm honest. But that encompasses quite a broad spectrum. I have my favourite classical composers. My favourite player, by far, is a man known as Keith Emerson, who unfortunately shot himself eight years ago. Very, very sad. An absolute genius. And he was from West Yorkshire. I like Keith Emerson. I like classical music. Um, if I can play it, then I generally don't like it very much. I like things that are a, an obstacle. If you had to choose a song, the last song you're going to hear to the day you die, or the day you die, I should say, what song would you like to hear? I'd like to hear... If I said you had a beautiful body, would you take me to court under the Trade Descriptions Act? But no, more sensibly, which one would I like? Let me think about this. And what meal would you like before we hang in? Homemade egg chips and beans with proper fried in lard chips. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely good. But uh, listening to... Vaughan Williams, Like Ascending, which I think is the most played piece of classical music anywhere in the world at any time. And it's absolutely beautiful. 
but uh, for me, the abuse is pretty good. Uh, changing the subject, did you know that the man who wrote the Planet Suite, Gustav Holst, was born in the Cotswolds? No. Holst drove through a village and it said this is where he was born. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Wow. And he was big friends with uh, Vaughan Williams. And Vaughan Williams did some transcriptions for him. And when you listen to Planet Suite, Venus from the Planet Suite sounds very suspicious of like a Vaughan Williams composition. <laughs> Andrew has a YouTube channel called Model Engineering Adventures and this section of this video is called New Things in Andrew's Model Engineering Adventures Workshop. He's splashed out and he's bought a 4-inch belt sander, a very useful tool. Over now back to the bench and as you can see he's bought some steam parts. The block that you can see was going to be a turret and we will be discussing that in a future episode. A Stuart Models Displacement Lubricator. Expensive, but very good. Then we have a whistle. This is from uh, China, and it's very nicely made. The casting is to die for. And it's a bit of a larger scale copy of a PM Research whistle. How it works, I don't know. By this time, Andrew thought it was a good time to feature his action man with the massively overscale hands. I must say I'm quite impressed at the speed at which Andrew has grasped the principle of scale. If you compare the reversing arm on the number 7 with the reversing arm on the twin launch, they're quite different. A quick word about an application for a twin launch engine. The Stuart twin launch, I would think, would power quite easily a six-foot boat and power it quite well. It's amazingly strong when it's running. In fact, I wouldn't like to put my hand in the propeller. I've kept my hand purposely away from that prop. On the triple expansion engine, it's the same. I've got a prop on the end of it. Mm. But that stops more readily than that. Right. That's brute power from each cylinder all the time. Is it right, Keith, that really it's called a twin, but it's actually a four-cylinder engine because it's... Got steam coming from the bottom and the top. Double active. That's the word. What's ironic though is that when they were first digging the oil out of the ground, particularly in America, they used steam engines to drill for the oil. It's worth remembering that steam is still to the fore. You see all the electric cars plugged in overnight chargers and in charging stations. But at the end of the day, the electricity that's charging them is made in a power station. And power stations run on steam. That's what those great big towers are for. The cooling towers are the condenser evaporators. They don't work quite the same way as the condenser on Andrew's model boiler, but they're there for a purpose. If you want some more information, Google power station cooling towers and you will be surprised. Andrew's condenser preheater gadget, this thing, is not really a condenser. Yes, of course, the steam does condense inside it, but it doesn't create a vacuum. On a full-size steam engine, the vacuum created by the steam disappearing pulls the engine along and the steam pushes it along. It's quite complicated. I'll make a series about it, or maybe at least an episode. That's it for now, time to go. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.